in the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition, another rather exciting edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am the gatekeeper or the host of this particular program, known here on the World Wide Web as the Mighty. Say it with me now. Mighty. Mighty. Mm. And your snub number seven. I am your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. I just released a video lecture and the title says something like it is time for the black woman to rise and stand up if the black man after 100 years being the figurehead being the one who is leading our people out of this Babylon if you have not been able to do this after 100 years this is not to say that black men have not had success but overall if this was a business a business called black liberation a business called black revolution then we would be like the Nat Turner Rebellion. We would be lynched by now. It would be a wonderful activity, but we would be somewhere in the ground decomposing. Now, the effort, of course, is much appreciated However, the energy or whatever we were looking for was not accomplished. So we do appreciate the works of Marcus Garvey and Elijah Muhammad, the Black Panther Party, and so many of our great black men. But we continue to live among races. We continue to suffer. In fact, we, in fact, we have gotten deeper into this casket. It is time. And you should want. Like Malcolm X said. By any means necessary. And if that necessary means. We should get from behind. This wheel. As a man. And allow a sister. A chance to drive this car. Then give her a chance. And let us see. If the black woman with the mentality not of a man, but with the mentality of thinking like an awakened woman, reach deep down inside her soul. And as she's thinking these things, she may produce the baby and the children that will bring us the answer to our prayers. What is the response that I have been getting asking black men that we should take more of an active role in uplifting and placing behind the steering wheel the black woman. It has been lukewarm. Of course, many sisters, they like the idea. But then there are also sisters who have been brainwashed by male patriarchal religious teachings that she should stay in the background. She should not want or wish to take a leadership position. Wait on her man. Well, you have been waiting. And I have been waiting on your man for 100 years. They've yet to get the job done. And anybody with common sense or running a business, if the manager, if those of whom you put or place in charge of the business, they are not making profit. Then that manager must accept a demotion or that manager needs to be terminated and fired. And somebody else 
more qualified, somebody else who can bring in new ideas and point the business in a new direction so now that it is profitable, they must take over and it makes no difference really the gender, it is how competent you are. But let us be fair. Our sisters have not had a chance or the opportunity given lip service that they are given a chance to lead this movement that we call black liberation. And so there of course are men who are loyal to the concept of I'm the leader of household, I'm the leader. Well, you have been leading. The male has been leading. And you can barely lead us to the toilet. We are still living in the toilet. Where have you led us to, Mr. Leader? Then there are brothers who remain silent because they really are loyal to this patriarchal teaching, but also they be quiet because they understand that what is being said is true. But they feel shame. There should not be any shame. Then get the job done if that's how you feel. That's all it takes. Prove me wrong. But it takes a lot of work, a lot of sacrifice, and it might even take death to prove me wrong. And it is clear that you're not ready for that. So whoever is ready to do those things should be in leadership position. We were taught as children to share in the family, mother and father, hopefully. But a good parent would teach their children among the siblings or among anybody that it is a nice thing for us to share. It is a nice thing for us to have compassion for the less fortunate. So if I have three or four cookies and somebody else does not have any, let us share and have compassion for those who don't have. This is a wonderful thing. And you don't have to be religious to feel that way. But however, we were taught these things, hopefully, when we were children to share. But when we become older, all those things are cast aside because now I'm the big macho black man. I'm a man. I'm the leader, head of the household. What happened to sharing? You have a wife. She can cook and clean, and, but she can't lead nobody nowhere. She's not qualified. This is bias and this is prejudice. And this is greed. Why can't she also share being leader of the household? And in modern times, many women bring in more bread, make more money than the male coming into the household. She Not only does the woman have to go out and get a job, she has to come home and cook your food. Wash your clothes, clean the house, take care of the children. Do you want a wife or do you want a slave? I think these men want a slave. And those who think that way, that's what they're looking for. They're not looking for a wife. They're not looking for a lover. They're looking for a slave. And when Caucasian people become older, they begin to understand the privilege of having Caucasian skin. Nobody cares anything about sharing. We're not going to share nothing with you. The Congress is Caucasian. The educational system is controlled by Caucasian. We're not sharing anything. But as children, we are taught, hopefully, to share. But nobody wants to share when we get older. So the children are taught to share, but adults don't have to. This is a confusing message that we send to our children. In Saudi Arabia, women are not allowed to drive. By who? By men. Why don't these women just drive? They are under the control and the manipulation of men. And the men tell them they can't drive. Why these women can't drive? Because 
these men want to continue to have control over these women so they will never be independent of them. You can't live without me. I don't want a strong, independent black woman. Anybody with a good heart wants people to be independent. Whatever you can do on your own, be proud of them to be able to cook their food, grow their food, do whatever they can on their own. But only a slave master mentality wants to keep people in a position where they can't be independent. So you're saying that the black woman, she can't think as well as a man. She's not as creative as a man. She don't have leadership potential like a man. This is a lie. When given the chance, black women can show that they can lead just as good as a man can. This is the same thing that the racists say about black people. But when you put black people and give us opportunity, what happens? We take over. We outperform the racists. Leadership, basketball, football, whenever you put black folks and give us an opportunity, we achieve. So what happens is the racist has to do things to make things put obstacles in our way to keep us from achieving. Deny us the opportunity. The only way that the black woman will prove that she's a failure as a leader if she gets behind the steering wheel and drives the exact same way as the male was and we see what the result was with man behind the wheel. She cannot do the same thing as her male counterpart. And the problem with black men behind the wheel is that you holler pro-black this and black that, but the only thing you're doing is copying the ways of the Caucasian people. A lot of these teachings that y'all have, if you take the black out of it and put white, the only thing you have is pink supremacy. It's the same thing. And pink supremacy was designed to keep you in the condition that you're in, and we are doing a very good job of doing that. Ain't you sick or tired of being somebody's slave? The want of control. You don't want a human being in your bed. You want a slave. You don't want to talk to another human being. You want a slave. So just as the Caucasian people made slaves out of black folks so they can feel superior, so that we can do their work for them. The same thing that the man, the male wants from our sisters. They want a slave. Cook my food. Take care of my babies. Go to work. Bring me your check. A feeling of supremacy. I'll drive the car. That's a man job. You don't have to worry about it. But the reality is, if given the opportunity, many of these sisters right now are in better physical shape than black men, can do more push-ups than black men. Physically, physically, they, they are in better shape. Of course, the woman is not as strong as a, as a man, but there are a lot of sisters who are in better shape than black men are. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, we are in this fight together. So if we are in this fight together, then why is the man the only one who can drive the car? Why don't, why don't we want these sisters to drive for a while? Why don't we inspire and encourage our sisters to get behind the wheel? Elijah Muhammad taught that you even teach your babies. If the only thing that the child can do is take a bottle and throw it, make sure that you teach the child to throw it at the enemy. And if the child can lead, let us be led by the baby. As long as the job get done, I could care less. Y'all tripping because you are really comfortable slaves. And you should, and we should be
in the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am the gatekeeper or the host of this particular program, known here on the internet. Y'all know I'm known as the mighty, mighty, mighty. Mm. And you snubbed up seven. I am your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. <laughs> I'm sorry, but certain topics make me laugh because they're just funny to me. But at the same time, it is rather sad. I will tell you why it's sad. When you look upon social media, social media is like a thermometer to what the real community really is. In the real community outside of social media and even prior to the internet, there have been thousands, if not a few millions of people, black people, African Americans, so-called Negro, Hebrew Israelite, whatever you want to call yourself, there have been thousands of us who are the descendants of slaves born in America for generations, generation after generation. We have stood up and we understand that this place called America is not our home. We understand that it may be impossible for this place called America as long as the racist Caucasian people control this land. It will never truly be our home. We will never gain true freedom, justice, and equality. So generation after generation, we have people who claim that there is a need for a black revolution. They are part of this movement of black liberation, either to return back to Africa for, some, for those who believe that's where we come from. However, for those who believe that we are uh, natural to this landmass, however you view it, we understand that there is a need for black liberation. So you look upon social media and we see countless videos and uh, blogs or vlogs, however you want to call it. Thousands, thousands of people for generations Thousands of black people, they claim and you say that you yearn for the liberation of a people. But yet after all this time, after generations, you sit upon social media, almost the same slave your ancestors was. Why is this? Why is this? Now what brings me to this topic? And what makes me laugh is that a question came into my mind or a statement. And that statement or question is if black revolution, if black liberation was sex, we would be free right now. We would be in Africa. We would be somewhere. We would take over this country. Something would be done to change our condition. If we felt about black liberation the way we do for towards the sexual act. The reason why we are obsessed with the sexual act because of the pleasure that we get. So we keep wanting more and more and more. If there was no pleasure 
in the sexual act if there was no attraction to the opposite sex and some of y'all the same sex same sex we would not be interested there are men and perhaps women and I know being around certain males and I might even be uh, snitching on myself <laughs> there are men who will walk not get in a car they will walk for miles in hopes that they can sleep with some female they will ride bus after bus they will hitchhike because they want that vagina They won't let nothing stop them. And not only is this for men, it's possible for women, but most times men are physical creatures or beings. And we are attracted to body shape. We are attracted to the flesh. And if a male was not attracted to the flesh, then how could the human being reproduce? Because there has to be some type of, of, of attraction to this flesh. And I also was looking at this. And I'm not trying to be vulgar or nasty. What does a penis look like? See, some of y'all so obsessed with the penis and the vagina just talking about this, this topic. It, it, what are you going to say next? What are you talking about? What you mean the penis is ugly? M my penis looks sort of cute. <laughs> Normally, the penis, the vagina, if they were not associated with the sexual act, these organs, your genitalia, and for some of us who are not obsessed with the sexual act. We view these organs, our genitalia, as something that don't look cute. In fact, it's rather ugly. And I'm I'm not going to try to describe it because I don't want to be nasty and vulgar. We know what they look like. Some of us own them. <laughs> but we are attracted to something that really we should view as ugly. But there is pleasure in that ugliness. There's some type of satisfaction that we crave, that we are attracted to, even in something that may be considered ugly. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But I can guarantee you, most times, no one would consider a vagina or a penis pretty. Now, we might consider a puppy pretty. We might consider a little infant in the cradle when you clean that infant up and smelling good like baby's supposed to. <laughs> we might consider that. But if it was not for the, the sexual pleasure that we derive from these organs, we would not consider them looking pretty at all or attractive. If only you, black man or woman in America, if you had that same type of attraction, if you felt the same type of pleasure for seeking black liberation, many of you talk, but you're not really a black liberator. You're not really attracted to your freedom. There are men willing to walk miles and miles and endure all kinds of stuff to get some stuff. But when it comes to black liberation, you don't see it that way. You're not even attracted. It must be and it has to be a mental illness that you 
yearn for sexual gratification, and that's how our enemies keep us enslaved. Because the same way you are attracted to the penis, the same way that you are attracted to the vagina, you should be attracted to your true freedom. You should want to seek true justice and seek equality not only for black men for, but for every man, woman, and child. And you should be willing to walk miles and miles and miles. If black liberation means that we go without a meal every day, whatever the harsh requirement, because that's something that we want, if you only felt the way you do when you want to get between somebody's legs or want somebody to go between your legs. I'm not trying to be vulgar or nasty, but if you felt that way, wanting to get between the legs of black liberation, wanting to get, wanting the black liberation to get between your legs, if you felt the same way, don't you know, black man and woman, we would be free overnight. And in and, and, and order to get some, and y'all know this, in order to get some, you have learned how to compromise. You really don't like that person, but you want to get some. That person ain't all that cute, but you want to get some. But you don't feel that way towards black liberation. Because if you wanted to get some black liberation, that means you have to compromise in order to get some. That means your brother and sister that you disagree with, that you don't like, but you're going to have to change your ways. You're going to have to be flexible so you can get some. What do you want? It's not a vagina. It's not a penis. What do you want? I want to be free from my oppressors. I want my ancestors to be proud of me. That's what I want. I want my own land. I want my own language. I want my own culture. I don't want to copy somebody else's culture. I want to do my own thing. I want to be independent. I want to be a strong black woman. I want to be a strong black man. That's what I want. I want some sex. I want to have sexual intercourse with black liberation because having sex with black liberation will produce a free baby, not a slave. Man, if only you and I, the same way that we lust for vagina, the same way that we lust for penis, we will lust and do what is necessary to get between the legs or let black liberation get on top of us. You're not real with this. If you was as real with black liberation as you are trying to get somebody pregnant, and then the only thing you're going to do is produce more slaves for the massa. That's all you're doing. Black liberation produces free babies, not more slaves. So in the penal system, you have children with the name Muhammad. And Shabazz, all these come from up out of our attempt to free ourselves. But now our babies are laying up in prison with the Islamic names that y'all call holy are in prison. The names of God, the names of Allah, for those of you who are Muslim. Why is that? You did not become free. You became and have become more enslaved. However, when you begin to treat black liberation like you treat this desire and this attraction you have for the, for the penis and the vagina, you will get free because you will have intercourse not with a physical man, not with a physical woman, but with this idea that should have been made manifest a long time ago. And out of that intercourse, your people, our people, will get free. Once and for all. Bang on this beast and get this beast off your back once and for all by having proper sex. Have sex with your mind and really...
in the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always and welcome to another rather exciting edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am the host of this particular program known here on the internet as the mighty, mighty, mighty mm, Angel Snub Number 7. I am your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. The topic that I've chosen for these short few, these short and few minutes is would you date a black man with children? <laughs> I normally do not, well actually this is a response to a video that I've seen called would you date a black woman? with children. Normally I do not speak on such topics. I rarely touch on them. And the reason why I do not speak about male female relationships and family and all these different things is that I feel as though our priorities are confused. You don't have your priorities in check. How can you, knowing you are a slave, knowing you are an oppressed person, how can you run around seeking family, seeking la di da seeking love, when you still live in another man's house, but yet and still you want to be viewed and call a man while you laying around having babies under the control of other people? Our priorities are messed up. We claim to be revolutionaries. We claim to be awake. We claim to be freedom fighters. But all I see is a bunch of Negroes who are first class comfortable slaves. How can I feel comfortable my wife living in the Masa house? How can I feel comfortable knowing my children will grow up in the Masa house? Your priorities are are messed up. Your first priority should be freedom, liberation. But the only thing this black man can think about is getting in somebody's panties. And then the black woman copies this weak black man. The only thing she think about is how to please her vagina. Y'all priorities, your thinking process is all messed up. And you don't deserve to be free. You nothing but a comfortable slave. This is like living in a slaughterhouse and you being a chicken. When the chicken lay eggs in the slaughterhouse, who do the eggs benefit? The chicken or the one who runs the slaughterhouse? Those babies, even if they hatch, will never be free. They are nothing but victims. A victim can only produce another victim. You, no matter how black conscious, black power, all that crap that y'all talk about, you are a victim. You are an oppressed person. And the only thing that you can do is produce a, an another oppressed person. The only thing that you can do in your family is produce another victim. Another oppressed person. Only a free person can produce a free person. And you're not free. You are a comfortable slave. And that's, not, that's all that we see all around us is comfortable slaves. Some of you believe that you can take your children and some way isolate them from their reality. I teach them what it means to be free. But they are not free. And as soon as they go out into the real world that you've isolated them from, many of them will become swallowed up. So it makes no difference if they are introduced to filth, a wicked society, when they are children or when they get adult. They are still slaves. They are still comfortable in their slavery just like you are. A slave can only produce a slave until that slave liberates him or herself. Family. You want to have family and live comfortable in this racist society. But yet and still you don't want to do the work. You don't want to sacrifice. 
do what is necessary so that your babies, your children can have a better future than yourself. The only thing that you can do is talk and get in these beds and make more babies, make more comfortable slaves. You are in a slaughterhouse and y'all act and behave just like animals being prepped up for slaughter. There is no benefit of you living for yourself. All that you do, everything that you benefit is for your slave master, the one who owns the, the slaughterhouse. This is a video response to would you date, I guess, a single black woman, a black woman with children. The attacks upon the black woman never stops and is always coming from these weak, pathetic, black, comfortable males. That's where it's coming from because they are too afraid, too cowardly to challenge the races, the powers that be. So then they take out their frustration and they take out their anger on the black woman. But when a man steps up to them, the only thing they can do is put their tail between their legs and run. How come this can't be the subject matter? Would you date a black man with children? Of course, we would not talk about that because many of these black men, if they do have children, they abandon their children. They will continue to live the single life and put all the burden of their babies on this black woman. And she has been doing that for the last 400 some years because this black woman suffers. This black woman is in the condition that she's in because these pitiful black men don't have the ability, don't have the courage to stand up and challenge a racist tooth and nail. Get this beast off your back once and for all. So the only thing you can do is cuddle the black woman. Find you a slave woman with a mentality and she will continue so you can lay down and have more slaves for the masa. This sort of thing, even for our ancestors who were actual slaves, physical slaves, this was not an issue. No black man in slavery had no problem with a black woman with children because they all viewed themselves in the same condition and viewed themselves as family. Straight out of slavery. Black people were sold from one plantation to another. Blood children were taken from their mothers and fathers and sent to other places. So nobody knew who really was bloodline, who really was relative or kin to so-and-so. But straight out of slavery, black people did not care. If you was my friend, you became my cousin, my uncle, my father, whatever. We saw ourselves as family. When I was a child, my mother was married, but also at the same time, my sperm donor, father, whatever you want to call him, and I have no, I have no ill will towards him because I know that he was deaf, dumb, and blind, ignorant to the knowledge of self. But at the same time, he was not a father, and I must describe the situation as it was. But there were men that came into my mother's life that treated me like a son. And those feelings and what that man did, I appreciate and I love him for the rest of my life. You just don't know what you do for a child. Regardless if that child is your pure blood or a cousin or a nephew or a niece to another human being, when you are kind to them, when you show love and caring for them, this is something that has become absent in the so-called black community. It is not developing in the so-called conscious community. We do not love one another. We do not care about one another. Whenever you see a black child, whether you, whether you want to get with the mother or not, that is your child. That is your responsibility. This is the village. We are the village, and it takes a village to raise our babies. And we have lost these things. We should view all our babies as family. 
So that should not even be a problem. Love is love if you love somebody. If the woman has one child or no children or a hundred, love makes us to want and care for all that she loves. But in America, being integrated into this society, something that is worse than slavery, because slaves did not think this way. Slaves were happy to adopt everybody into the fold because a slave knew how it was to be oppressed and alone. And these people knew and having a family took some of that pressure. That's, see, that's why some of us suffer because we don't have family to help take some of this pressure off of us. We run around here alone by ourselves. Not part of no organization. Don't have no family alone. This is where these attitudes come from. In this integrated racist society, they have taught us and teaching us how to be an individual. It's all about us. Selfish. Living with these racists. I was listening to a brother on this particular video talking about would you date a single or a single woman, a black woman with children and they was talking about I want a righteous woman and there ain't too many good women out here. It's probably out of ten women, it's probably only two out of the ten. Self-righteous, who are you? And then you look at these brothers. How they dress, how they talk. They look weak. They don't even look strong. But you have the nerve to be choicy. Got earrings in both of your ears. Weak. And you have the nerve to judge. So how many good men is it? Clearly, if there were good men, if there were righteous men in the society like these brothers claim, then the black woman would not be in the condition that she's in. The reason why she and her children are in the condition that she's in because she don't have a proper man. So if two out of ten black women are not righteous, then point five men are not out of that ten is righteous. With your earrings in your ear and your weak talk. You have no land. You have no businesses. You have nothing to offer. You're living in the Caucasian man's house. You want a family and bring your more babies into the slaughterhouse. What kind of man, what kind of men are these that would do such a thing? And what kind of woman would lay down with men who want to make babies in the Caucasian man's slaughterhouse? You better think about these things. But see, y'all are comfortable slaves. The number one priority should be your freedom. Not a donut. Not going to Disneyland. Not debates. Not buying pretty cars. Your number one priority should be the liberation of your people by any means necessary. Just like Malcolm said. If that means that you go extinct by guerrilla warfare, however... In order to get the job done, then so be it. Why should you be a man running around here with a family, girlfriends, and sleeping around? If you were the real warrior, you would not even be caring anything about that because you might have to take on a mission that could take your life. Liberation is life-threatening for the man because the man is the first line of defense. And when there's not enough men then it's time for the women to take up arms and even the children. It's about liberation. It ain't about having no families. la da Y'all comfortable slaves. So who, who is going to buy the next tickets to Disneyland, slave? Let's go on vacation in Hawaii. Let's go to Africa on a vacation. That's all y'all think about. That's not what liberation is about. And until you really understand and do what is required by liberation, you, you will remain in this slaughterhouse and these devils will kill you and...
in the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Reality Temple on Earth. In fact, another exciting, rather exciting edition of the Reality Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am the host of this particular program known here on the internet. Let's say it together now. I am the mighty. Come on, mighty. Come on, mighty. Huh. Angel Snup Nup 7. I am your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. Now, I hope, but I do know that many of you have had experience with the so called justice system of this nation. Either we have experience with something as simple as a traffic fine or we have been accused of some type of felony which of course would be murder and other types of crime. Also, many of us, we have been in car accidents. We have been or we have eaten bad food, things of this nature, so we end up in civil court. Somebody don't want to pay me my money, so we end up on Judge Joe Brown or the Greg Mathis show. So in this society, not only in America, but around the world, there are systems of jurisprudence. There are systems of law. And we should, and even in grade school, we should be taught basic law. We should be taught basic law, whereas even if you don't have any money, you have the right to use the court. Many of us do not take advantage of the legal system because we believe we can't afford it. But if you understand and know how to file your own uh, suits, law, access to the court system in this nation should not be denied to anyone no matter what your class is, of course, you will not be given the greatest of justice, but at least you will get a little. But many of us can't get a little because we don't know and have no knowledge of such a thing. So you may be very smart and educated and have a master's degree in whatever, but you are ignorant to the laws of this nation, both criminal and civil. So someone like me, who is nothing but a jailhouse lawyer, then I have a heads up over you with all your years and years of learning from some university or college. Why do we need a lawyer? We need a lawyer because we get in trouble. We need a lawyer because something has gone wrong as far as someone charging us with a crime, being a victim of a crime, being a victim of an injury or some other harm that someone has caused us. So in order to get relief, do not take the law in your own hands, they say. Don't be a vigilante. Go to court. And in order to go to court, most times, you must be represented by counsel. You must be represented by a lawyer, an attorney. If you are accused of a crime, then you need to find someone who will defend you against such crime. 
Hold on. So, what is the job of a attorney? What is the job of your lawyer? The lawyer or the attorney is to represent you. Listen now. The lawyer or the attorney that you hire, their job is to represent you in favor of your best interest. Not in the best interest of himself or herself. Not in the best interest of the judge or the prosecutor or the defendant. Your best interest. That is a good lawyer. And black people, because we need representation when we get in trouble, the black man and woman, the descendants of slaves born in America after 400 years and during our 400 year sojourn in America. We have had and we do need defense attorneys. We need somebody to defend us against false criminal accusations as well as we are victims of a crime against humanity. Who are the enemies of your lawyer? Now listen to me. The enemy of your lawyer would be the prosecutor, the defendant, and somebody you probably don't even think about. You can sometimes become your own worst enemy. The reason why we hire a lawyer, the reason why we hire an attorney, is because we've gotten into trouble and we don't even understand exactly what has happened to us? Most of us, we go to court and the judge and the prosecutors quote all these different statutes from the law. That's why a jury is given instructions and they, it must be made clear that they understand the law. You hire an attorney because you are ignorant of law. You don't understand what has happened to you. And some of us think that we know. If you know, why do you hire a lawyer? So a good lawyer would try to be as honest as they can with you. A lawyer would be someone that is competent. So we need a competent lawyer. We need somebody that will defend black people and stand up for us our best interests. Then, of course, you know you have sellouts. You have those lawyers and people who will sell you out. Instead of you deserving $10,000, the lawyer is not really making no money off the case and wants to get rid of you and tell you that you should settle for 1000 So your lawyer gets his money and you get your little 1000 when... You should have gotten 10000 Your lawyer should be trying to get you probation. But they have too many clients or whatever the reason. Or maybe they just don't like you. So instead of fighting to get you probation, you end up doing 20 years in the slum. A lawyer is not friends with the defendants. Your lawyer is not to be friends with the judge or the prosecutor. The lawyer is to stand up for your best interest. And I will tell you, there's nothing like a good lawyer. Some of us have gotten into trouble, charged falsely with a crime, and because we lack money, we don't have uh, sufficient economic means, we are given a public defender because that's the law. You must be represented by counsel. And public defenders get a bad rap. Just like there are good and bad. You have great public defenders and you have bad public defenders. One of the things that's wrong with a public defender is most of these persons 
just graduated out of law school and actually they are using your case to get experience so they don't have the experience like some lawyer that has been doing this for years and years and years and also it's according to what kind of case that you're dealing with because even some of the best lawyers if that is not your expertise but you're trying to represent that case you're still not going to do much better than somebody that just graduated out of law school the black man and woman in America we have many vicious enemies the number one enemy that we have of course is the racist pink people of this nation who control these systems who control the law that's why we can't get justice because they created the law they control the law another enemy that we have of course is our own people who have grown comfortable living with races and they have the mentality if you can't beat them join them and because of racism because of the racist media then negative images is painted about black people all over the world and some of us the scriptures say in biblical teaching as a man thinking so is he so all these stereotypes many of us we actually act on those stereotypes so when people who really don't know